Hello everyone, this is Jay Alabaster again for Coding for Journalists, and today we're going to talk about JavaScript. So I've set up a small project, and if we look at the files and folders here, we can see there's three files, index, a JavaScript file, and a style sheet, and then there's also an images folder. If we open the images folder, you can see there's a bunch of images in there already. And one thing in Thimble I haven't said before, if you click on the images, you can actually see some details about the images, including the colors uh, that are prominent and where they are in the project. So let's take a look at the HTML. The HTML looks a little cluttered, but it's really only four things. There's a big headline, a big image, and then two smaller images below it. And if we look at the output, we can see that's exactly what shows up. Okay, so let's click over to the JavaScript file. And JavaScript's new, so it might look a little confusing, but let's take it line by line. At the very top, you can see I create a variable called animal number, and I set it to equal one. On line four, you can see there's a function called next animal. Now on websites, we need something to set off this JavaScript function, something to trigger it. So let's jump back to the HTML code and see if we can find out where that is. If we zoom in on the bottom two images, which are arrows, you can see they both have an onClick attribute. This tells the web browser to execute JavaScript code when someone clicks on one of these images. Now for this project, we're interested in the second arrow, the right-facing one. And you can see that the onClick attribute is set to the next animal function in the JavaScript. So when someone clicks that right arrow, it triggers the next animal function in the JavaScript code. Now if we jump back to the JavaScript code, we can see that same function, next animal. And if we zoom in, we can see the first thing that happens is that animal number equals animal number plus one, which means that animal number, that variable, gets increased by one every time someone clicks that right arrow. Now if we scroll a bit down in the code, we can see five if statements. And I think it's clear that each if statement checks for a certain number. And if animal number equals that number, then it sets the image to be a certain animal. So if, for instance, animal number is one, then we get a bear. If it's three, we get a lion. If it's four, we get an octopus. Now remember, anytime the user clicks the right arrow and the next animal function gets called, animal number is increased by one. So basically, it proceeds through the animals. And we can see this working if we look at the example. Each time I click on the right arrow, it increases animal number by one and sets a different animal. And as we go through one through five, there's no issue. The problem is when we go over five, we get to six or seven or eight. There's no corresponding animal, so the slideshow is stuck. We could add more animals, or we could check if animal number gets too high and then set it back to one if that's the case which is what we do here in this code. You can see that if animal number is bigger than five, we set animal number back to one. And now, if we cycle all the way through the animals and get to the last one, which is the monkey, and click again, we'll loop around, go back to one, and come back to the bear. So we can click as much as we want on that right arrow, and if we get too high, it'll just reset back to the first animal. Now we can take another look at our JavaScript code and see there's only really four things happening. On line one, you can see we define a variable called animal number and set it to one. That only happens one time when the page loads. Next, we have a function called next animal, which only gets triggered when someone clicks the right arrow button. And you can see there's basically three things that happen. The first thing is that animal number gets increased by one every time someone clicks. As we go down, we want to make sure that animal number isn't too high because we only have five animals. So if animal number is greater than five, we reset it back to one. And finally, we get to the set of five if statements at the bottom of our code. And all it does is check what animal number is and set the image to the corresponding animal. I'll go ahead and publish so you can take a look yourself. I hope this made JavaScript a little bit clearer. So thanks as always, and please get in touch if you need help.